if we have a single random variable, then we see that this random variable is discrete if the range of the random variable is finite or countably infinite. For a single discrete random variable, we define the probability mass function simply as the probability that the random variable x takes the value lowercase x, and this probability mass function is a function from r to r. The corresponding concept when we are dealing with several discrete random variables is called the joint probability mass function. So if I have n discrete random variables denoted by x1, x2, and so on, all the way to xn, then we define the joint probability mass function as a function from rn to 0, 1. So this is a function of n variables, lowercase x1 through lowercase xn, and it's defined as the probability that the first random variable takes the value x1, the second one takes the value x2, and so on, to the final xn takes the value lowercase xn. Each of these xi's is a real number, and since we have n of them, the domain of the function f is rn. In the case of n equal to 2, we can use either x1 and x2 for the two random variables, or which is more common, we can use x and y. For this simpler case, the probability mass function becomes a function of just two variables defined as probability x equal to x, y equal to y. But we can just as well call these random variables x1 and x2, and then define the PMF as f of x1 and x2. If we have a single random variable, then we define the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, as f of x being equal to the probability that this random variable takes a value less than or equal to x. In the case when we have n random variable, then the CDF function f will be a function of n variables, x1 through xn. And the definition in this case is the probability that x1 is less than or equal to x1, and so on, all the way to the last one, xn less than or equal to xn. This is then called the joint CDF or the joint cumulative distribution function. A simple example with the sample space S containing alpha, beta, gamma, and theta, assuming each outcome being equally likely, will give us a probability measure. And let's say that we've defined two random variables, x1 and x2, like this, x1 mapping alpha to 2, beta to 2, gamma to 2, theta to 0, while x2 maps alpha to 0, beta to 1, gamma to 1, and theta to 1. Based on this definition, we can find the joint probability mass function, and we can find the joint cumulative distribution function. As an example, f of 2,1 is the probability that x1 takes the value 2, x2 takes the value 1. This is the probability of the event beta and gamma, and this will then be 1 half. The joint PMF evaluated at 0, 0, probability that x1 is 0, x2 is 0. Since there is no outcome that's mapped to 0 by both x1 and x2, this is the probability of the empty set, so this is 0. In the same fashion, we can evaluate f of x1 and x2 for any value of x1 and x2. As an example of the CDF, f of 1 comma 1, well that's the probability that x1 is less than or equal to 1 and x2 is less than or equal to 1. This will only happen if theta is the outcome, so this is the probability of theta, which with equal probability assumption is 1 by 4.